If you want to practice texturing professional level models for free, I've created a resource called the 3D Artist Coloring Book. I will leave a link in the description. It has full resources and files. You can click to download instantly pre-prepared professional files with a beautiful, beautiful live resource as well. Very easy and completely free. And I'll leave a link in the description. Now let's get to the video, guys. Ever since I started this channel, I have been struggling with creating a hand painted look using PBR maps. Now today, I think I've gotten a little closer and let me show you the wire asset that we're gonna be working on. We're gonna use wood, cloth, and metal combined to create this project. Now I had to overcome a lot of hurdles to get through here and I wanted to record the experience for you guys to pass on the knowledge and show you how to create each three of these materials to create that hand painted effect. Now to start off, we're gonna tackle the wood. And like with any other material, we're gonna start with a nice dark brown base material. Once I'm happy with my base material, I create a new fill layer, turn off all the channels and select a slightly lighter color it's time to start adding the curvature in. And we're gonna be using this, or we're gonna be doing this using a black mask and then a curvature mask put on top of it using the curvature generator. Wood has a lot and of wear and tear. So to have the edges worn out, especially with a handle that's gonna see quite a bit of use, it's really great to get these nice highlighted edges. If you opt, if you hop into the curvature settings, you can actually start tweaking it yourself and kind of dial in those sharp corners. Once that's done, I create my third fill layer. And again, I'm gonna be doing almost the exact same thing. So you can just copy and paste it. I choose a slightly lighter color and maybe put some orange into it. And then you hop into your curvature settings and you mess with more of the sharp and fine settings. This is going to add slighter and more detailed curvature right across the tight edges themselves. So instead of having these big blocky um, curvature highlights, you're gonna have nice tight detailed ones too. It's very important with art and stylized art that you layer in your effects for more detail. Once that is done, it's time to start working on your ambient occlusion and grunge passes. So what you're gonna do is set your color all the way to black, right click, add a black mask, and then you can either start with ambient occlusion or a dirt generator. In this case, we're gonna start with dirt just because this is a nice detailed model and the dirt will fill the cracks very, very nicely. Now, in this, in, in this material, I don't keep it too strong um, just to make sure that the dirt isn't overpowering, but it's really nice to see the dirt fill up the cracks. It also makes the shadows pop nicely. Next is the actual ambient occlusion itself, and this is very easy to do. By disabling my roughness, I'm making sure that the only the color pass is getting passed through. You can simply use the ambient occlusion generator, and this is going to give you a larger scope of detail around the edges of the handle. You can see where the handle connects with the uh, cloth and at the base as well. That's where the ambient occlusion is really gonna kick in. It's a small detail, but it makes a big, big difference. To add a nice final touch to it and to give it some color variation, it's time to add some baked lighting. So if you create a fill layer and just add a baked stylized lighting filter and make sure you change the blend mode to soft light and remove the roughness channel, you can add some really amazing color variation like you can see as I hop through it. It's also a very, very customizable filter. So there's a ton of stuff you can do with it and you can change the color as well. And you can see here with just those few layers, I've already created a really, really, really solid smart material for wood.
Next is one of my favorite materials, stylized cloth. So for this one, I'm going to make sure I put it in a folder and pop it on top. This one is going to be very, very similar to the wood material. It's almost like there's a formula for following stylized art. Who knew? We're going to start with a nice base layer. I think in this one, I go for a nice dark red. And the only other thing you really have to keep in mind is that you want to set the roughness all the way to one. However, anything between 0.75 and one works just fine. Now, since it's a cloth handle, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to add some nice curvature highlights to it. If you're gripping a, a um, if you're gripping an axe, there's going to be a lot of wear on the handle. So we're going to add a black mask and add a mask generator and make sure that we're using the color generator to pull up the highlights. Now, I typically like to use white beforehand so you can easily see the material. And then once I've got the shape of the highlight selected, then you can use the color picker and, and start slowly building in the color and getting it to match with your piece. Now, if I had planned this a little better, what you can do is you can also use the position settings in this uh, generator settings that I'm messing around with. And you could probably add some more wear into that inside left handle that you see on that left side. That would add some more story to it as the actual handle where your fingers are gripping it would often have quite a bit more wear. But for now, this is just an example. So this will do just fine. And just like the wood, I want to double up on my details. And this time I'm going to copy and paste the previous layer, the curvature layer, and I'm going to tweak the fine settings. I'm going to make sure that some of these smaller details are highlighted so it adds more depth to the piece, but you still keep that nice stylized look. Next, let's start adding in some shadows, dirt, and ambient inclusion. So I typically start with the dirt pass. So what we're gonna do is add a black mask and then add a generator and we're going to add the dirt generator. And since this is a well sculpted asset, it's gonna fill the cracks very, very nicely. You can use different colors to make it stand out before you get it set in properly like I did with the white there. But basically I would just recommend pulling back the grunge and dirt amount just enough so it fills in the major cracks of the asset. If you start filling in all the little details, it's going to lean more into realism and start looking less stylized. To top it off, I add another fill layer and to close it out, I use a baked stylized lighting filter again just to get some really awesome color variation. Make sure, I'm gonna say this 100 times, make sure you switch to the soft light blend or else it's not going to work. And you also have to make sure to turn off the roughness. But look at the difference right there just toggling through it. You can see it adds so much so much shape and so much volume to it and you don't have this flat piece. Stylized art doesn't have to be flat and boring. You can make it dynamic and, and awesome by baking in all this light thanks to Substance Painter. The metal itself is pretty easy and straightforward since I've already done quite a bit of work with stylized metal as well. I just used the dark stylized metal base that I have for my patrons. If you want to grab it, I'll leave a link in the description. From here, I basically just add a black mask and isolate the hammer head or the axe head itself. And then I'll be tweaking this material to make it a little lighter for the actual um, blade of the axe. Once I've got the dark material locked in, it's time to start on the lighter one. So I just add a, um, I just drag and drop it from the top, add a black mask, and we are good to go. 
I move the stylized lighting filter to the top of the stack so it's not affected by the base color. And you can see I've already got some nice color variation. Not that it matters that much on a flat face. Now, all I'm gonna be doing is adding another black mask and I'm going to be manually painting it onto the handle itself, as you'll see in a few seconds here. That's mainly because the geometry wasn't set up for to isolate the handle. So sometimes you just have to go in and hand paint it yourself. No problem. I've sped this up 300% because there's nothing too exciting going on here. Basically, I paint everything else, everything out very sloppily first, and then I use the erase tool to get in and get the finer details. You don't have to do it this way, but this is just the way I end up doing it. Also a small trick, what I'm doing there with cutting the straight lines, if you click your mouse and then hold shift, it'll draw a straight line in, from, in between from where you previously clicked your mouse to where you're placing your mouse in the future. Super handy trick for making, making nice clean lines. And when you put it all together, you get something like this. Thanks for learning with me today, guys. As usual, I'm Thomas from Stylized Station, and I will see you in the next video.